What's up guys? This is uh Connery from Outer Work Outdoors and I'm trying to adjust the camera. Hey guys, this is Connery from Out of Work Outdoors, and uh, this is a video request response to one of our viewers who wanted us to uh, cover um, some lures that we're using to catch uh, white bass or sand bass during the sand bass runs. As you guys can kind of scroll through our videos, we just uploaded a video of, uh, of me and my dad. We were fishing the white bass runs, and some, some of the guys just wanted to know uh, what we were using and things like that. And I can tell you that. Here in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, majority of the white bass runs, if you're going to be successful, I would say 70% of the runs are fished with jigs. And all types of jigs, curly tails, uh, buck tails, uh, feather tails, you name it, custom people tie their own, custom colors, things like that, which I'll get into in a little bit. So 75, 70, 75% of them crappie jigs jigs that's it the other half that i've seen are well not other half the other 30 percent i've seen are on like say swim baits uh smaller size swim baits of course and um crank baits lipless crank baits your rattle traps i've seen them caught on that i've seen them caught on spoons cast masters they've worked on that pretty well from time to time um they do have those lures do have their own advantage and disadvantages and even flukes, uh, we do have that video of the fluke reviews. I've already done that. Check those out too. Uh, the flukes are more aimed towards the uh, the bigger bass or the bigger uh, white bass. Uh, but for I would say, mm, say the the average sizes, I would say anything uh, say 11 inches or smaller. You're gonna you're gonna have a lot more luck. And on top of that. A lot less expense and that's one of the major things about uh, sand bass fishing it's it's very inexpensive it gives a good time if you find a good school it's just endless fishing for an hour they just keep on biting so without uh, talking too much uh, let's go right into it so here is what I have this is my kind of say crappie or small fish uh, tackle box okay this is where this is where all the jigs, floaters, and things like that. But just wanted to warn you guys. This is my oldest tackle box that I currently carry with me, and this one has been submerged underwater too many times, and sometimes I don't clean it. So if it's a little rusty, yeah, it's because I didn't clean it after I've already, it's already been in the water. So there you go. Yeah, it's kind of rusty on the inside. But yeah, um, I've already reviewed these jigs. These are the swimming. These are the swimming, uh, I think you're lucky, uh, what was it, uh, I don't have it, but anyways, I'll annotate it, I have a video on these already, I forgot what their actual name, of, the name of these are called, brain fart, I know, but they look just like this, and you dress them with your choice of a jig head, that simple, uh, my most lucky colors are pink head, pink head, and a green body for some reason that seems to be my best combination right there um, recently I've well actually I started fishing the the white one the firecracker white and then I went to the blue one or the blue slash green and then I also carry on hand some other ones same type it was a smaller size fish are always bipolar you want to carry different sizes different colors so I got the blue one as well and this is the smaller size I even have the chartreuse color as well in same lure configuration um, as for jig heads you got your white with a little dash of red you got your yellow you got different sizes different styles 
just a little example of what I carry. Because you never know what's going to be biting that day. Maybe that day they're going to be biting a small green head. You know, you, they're barely right under the surface. You don't want it to go down too far. They're going to bite that. Uh, maybe the next day they're all they're just hitting on white. Or the next day they don't do nothing but on black. The next day they might do nothing but on pink or on green or on orange or on another color. So, oh yeah, different sizes also matters too. I don't know if you guys picked that up yet, but quarter, uh, eighth, and uh, one sixteenth is even in here as well. That's one sixteenth. Okay, so, and killer rig. Okay, I forgot about that. The killer rig setup, one sixteenth with a small crappie jig on here. No, yeah, awesome. That's the, other, that's the other rig uh, we also catch a lot of our fish on, is the, uh, the killer rig that we kind of, uh, like we uh, got from, uh, 24 7 outdoor addiction one of our guys who kind of co-developed it but that's my jigs and but those are all the ones that are not weedless and I got some more over here that are the weedless type and if you're fishing really rocky areas where you're bouncing these off the ground off the bottom which you kind of have to all the time because that's where most of the fish hang out that's another style of jig head that I have uh, these the reason why I have this is this actually uh, due to its slim profile you can see right there you know, slimmer profile. Uh, these will actually uh, drop in the, they'll drop to the bottom faster. And here's another uh, eighth ounce. I forgot what this one's called. I think it's called Mr. Crappie or something like that. But it's got the uh, little rubber uh, weed guard right there. It does help, but it doesn't always help. The good and bads about the weed guards is usually when I'm fishing this, I am using a lightweight spinning rod. So when they do bite, you can't just simply reel or tug. You really have to give a, a really, really strong hook set. Because otherwise, it's just going to pull right out of fish's mouth. And I've done that many times. So if you're fishing these in deep water, a really strong hook set. you got to have it where it's not going to set properly. Um, I usually just single rig them. Like, I mean, just a single jig, just like that, at the uh, end of the uh, line there. But every once in a while, I'll do a double jig, especially when I don't know what's hot. Like, I don't know what's color, what color is hot. So, uh, my usual first, like, my go-to color, I always rig up a go-to color, which is uh, right here. And as you can see, um, this one's kind of, that's how I rig them too, if you guys didn't notice. Uh, that's how I rig them in my jigging uh, video. Uh, I rig it like this, I usually put this one on the bottom, and I'll throw another another color on top. Maybe Maybe that color. Okay, but that's not all the colors I have, alright? So the key to fishing uh, white bass, in my opinion, is to have as many colors as you can. I mean, I don't care what brand it is, what it is, but these are just some of the brands that I've come to like over the years. Some of the brands, <clears throat> oh yeah, this is also a good color too, right over here. That's also a really good color for any given day. Uh, white feathers, green body, and red head. Good choice. Um, don't buy any of these things. You know, how, you know how you have like a spinner bait contraption like that, and you put like a little jig on the back. Uh, never worked. I don't even know why I bought it. Uh, the other thing was uh, pink can be hot at times. Usually, it's not that hot. If you if you go with a pink, then you might as well go with just a pink head and your green body, you more coloration that type of stuff. Uh, but this, uh, if you're gonna buy these squirts or skirts, uh, make sure you buy them. Buy the ones that have a solid body, not just a, like a tube. Well, these are called tubes, but solid bodies. I'm a big fan of solid body with a jig head. Um, I've also tried this during walleye season, and these these don't work. Don't buy this. Well, the, don't buy these in this color. They don't work. Okay, the multicolor. It's one of the lures I bought, tried it multiple times, no luck. Still in here because I spent money on it already. And the other thing, every once in a while, I'll, I'll throw out the rooster tails. But usually if you can catch up on a rooster tail, you can catch them on jigs. So um, that's the other thing too. A lot of people, if you don't know how to jig for white bass, rooster tails are a, it's a big, it's a big, uh, it's a big winner. Because it's simply you just cast it out and reel it back in. But downside of rooster tails in running water is they never get down to the depths you want them to go to. So if you're in running water, these will probably go maybe like six inches below the surface and that's it. Uh, they're not going to go much lower than that. I'll give you maybe a foot, foot and a half. But on a jig, if you know how to 
if you know how to jig upstream, like cast upstream and follow your jig down, the strictly bouncing off rocks as it comes by, a lot more hits on the jig. I guarantee you a lot more hits. And most of the fish are actually down low anyway, so that's where you want to where you want to be. Um, let's see. So I've just gone through like my plastic jigs, right? Oh yeah, this is the uh, the swimming stuff that I was telling you guys about. I'm not a big fan of the swimming stuff. It's not. It's not a super big fan of it. To me, it just doesn't have enough action. The only thing you really see is just the tail moving. That's about it. Not a big swimming uh, action, a swimming uh, lure person. I know hybrid killer kind of is, but he still prefers the jigs. There's a couple more uh, smaller jigs, jig heads that you can buy. Uh, these are the 130 seconds that we use for, uh, yeah, for white bass. Once you, when you kill a rig, that's another good uh, weight to have as well. But on top of that, every once in a while, um, when you know the fish are suspended, here's the other trick. When you know the fish are suspended, they're not on the bottom, and you're fishing the rooster tails, they're not going down deep enough, and you're fishing jigs by themselves, you double jig them or you single rig them, and they're sinking too fast, throw in a bobber, okay? Measure out whatever you think where the fish is at. Uh, what well, could be like three feet, five feet, tie it on, put a bobber on, cast it out, just kind of, you know, jig it in. It'll hit. And a lot of people don't understand that. And a lot of people don't have bobbers in their systems. And, but, shit, I still do. I like it. And it's deadly on crappie, too. During crappie season, if you're on the lake, cast it out. See some brush pile? Cast it out. Rule it right by that brush pile on a bobber. Hits very good. A lot of my fishing uh, experiences, uh, the good, good crappie trips, have been on bobbers and jigs. Okay, So that is a little bit of what I have. I got more coming. Okay, these are by far the best feather crappie jigs I've ever used. Okay, with price being a good factor. I know there's a lot of other crappie jigs out there that are way better. Better tied, better colors, better shapes, better everything else. But they're like two for three dollars, okay? Or one for three dollars for that for that matter. And these are the ones from the Bass Pro Shops. And this comes in a really nice package actually. Ten of these. Well I've already taken a couple of them out, but ten of these for about two fifty. Two fifty three dollars. It's definitely under three dollars. I can't remember the exact prices on it. But these are the Marabou crappie jigs from Bass Pro Shops, hand tied quality. Very, very good. A lot of these, the main issue with these is that I see from the ones that where you can buy them from like say Walmart or something, is it's not very well tied. And what I mean by not very well tied or it doesn't have the dexterity in it is when the when the fish hits it, the skirts will fall off after about two fish. <sighs> but this seems to be a much better uh, quality lure. I mean, they all might look the same right out of the package, but after three or four fish, you could definitely tell a difference. Some of the cheaper ones, I mean, this is still a cheap lure, okay? I'm not going to tell you this is a great lure. But for sand bass, it, you don't want anything too expensive anyways, because if you're fishing like we are, and you're fishing on rocks, you're, you're bound to lose two or three of these every trip out. So you can't afford to lose too much, because then you'd just be wasting money. Uh, but anyways, uh, this is one of our hottest colors this year, is the all-white this is the uh, eighth ounce, and it's all white, and it's got these uh, reflective strips on it. And it's really good. Like, in the water, when all these strips come back together, it actually looks like it's blue. A little bit of blue on it. So, that's been, like, one of the hot colors this year during the sand bass runs. All white. Okay. And some days, this is the hottest color, but some days you want to switch it up a little bit. Just because the... Uh, places that we fish are all public areas and there's a lot of pressure on the fish so some days they'll hit nothing but orange or they'll hit nothing but green and if you double jig them you can do two colors especially when you first get there and you're still in that exploring mode you don't know what's hot but maybe you've been there like maybe last week and it was hot and white so you go with the white and you look around you know before you actually go down in the river just take a quick look around uh, at the local guys see who else is there see who's catching fish and then uh if you if you get enough eyesight, you just zoom right in and you can pick up the colors that they're using, and use that color. That's gonna be dynamite too. So pick up a color that you are you personally know 
you have some history with, a little confidence with. And number two is whatever they are currently biting on that day that you can see somebody catching fish with. Those are the two if you're going to double jig. And mostly all the anglers out there that I see, they do, they do the double jig. I'm not a big fan of double jig just because I can't control the lures as well as I want uh, to control them. Because with double jigs, you can't really feel the rocks very well. I fish braid, right? I fish 10-pound Power Pro braid, standard Power Pro, none of that. Super slick eight when I'm jigging. And I want to be able to feel the rocks, okay? Because if I get snagged in a certain area, I don't want to get snagged on that area again. So I'm always jumping from, like, rock to rock during in the current. So I'm usually a one-person guy. I mean, one uh, jig person. But uh, here's the other one that could potentially catch sand bass. I've caught a sand bass on a wax wing. We've caught multiple sand bass on crankbaits. Anything that looks like a fish, they're going to hit on, okay? Um, here's the newest addition to my sand bass lure package. This is the Cotton Cordell. I forgot what it was called, but it's pretty high. I took the front hook off just so I wouldn't snag up on the rocks, but. My cousin swears by this. I haven't yet caught a fish on this, but my cousin swears by it. And I told him he was lying, and he showed me a picture. He caught 126 white bass in one day with this exact lure. So he convinced me to go buy one. Yeah, I listen to other people too. I'm not always the best guy, and I'm far from it, okay? But I like sharing information with people. And if they share with me, I'm pretty happy, okay? So we got a couple crankbaits. These are the uh, H2O Express. This is a good color for fishing bass, murky water, kind of simulates uh, bluegill, I guess. And another, another uh, just shad color. And these are the Zara puppies. Uh, these are the leftovers from last year. During the sand bass runs at Keystone, this is the baby bass color. Has a, uh, had a lot of success with baby bass, even though I do prefer the chrome over this one. Um, this is the other one that Bass Pro, no, it was Bass Pro, it was actually Walmart. Walmart was selling this in their, this is the all clear. As you can see, this is the all clear. And uh, Walmart was selling this for $1.50. Couldn't resist, picked it up. Even though I don't really like it because the anchoring system is not very good. And you can see the anchoring system is basically just a screw that screws into the body. If a big fish fights it, twists it around a couple of times, hook's coming off. Uh, that, these are the swimming stick bait types. You also got a couple poppers up in here. Just because some days, uh, this is what I've noticed too, the poppers tend to attract bigger fish. You're going to get less strikes, but when you do, the poppers get bigger fish. So if you know there's a big school of fish down there, throw out a popper. And these are the rattle trap imitations. I think these are more cotton cordels. And these are strictly for sand bass. These are sand bass sizes. These are fairly small. This is only inch, inch in length. This is another inch and a half, okay? So these are always good to have. Not always good in the rivers with rocks, but in lakes or if you're on a boat, it's good to have. Um, this is actually a, I think, I've never actually caught, this is my brother's, I don't know what this is. He just stuffed it in my, my toolbox. But that, I believe, is a, it's either a jackal or a havoc, one of the two. All right. To the last one, and this is really the striper hybrids and even sand bass box. Okay, this is what I have. I got the mag popper, which is really designed for big fish. Reviewed already. Go check it out. That's on the 24/7 uh, Outdoor Addiction channel. And this is the Rapala Subwalk. Reviewed already. A big wax wing for stripers. This is the Bill Dance Topwater uh, from Hedden. Another, uh, this is H2O uh, TM uh, Swimming Pencil Bait. This is actually really, really good lure for the, for the money. Uh, I've caught multiple, multiple stripers, multiple uh, hybrids and white bass with this one. It's a little on the light side, so it doesn't cast as far. Um, yeah, this is what I'm talking about right here. This is the Fluke setup that I use. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys use as well. This is the standard standard size fluke right here and this is rigged with a half ounce jig head I know most people won't do that but uh, fishing a sooner lake I use a half ounce jig head most people go to a quarter or even smaller than that and that always works 
Uh, this is the the KVD Sexy Dog top water. This is by far the best top water lure in terms of hookup ratio out there. It doesn't swim perfect, but in terms of a hookup ratio, it's a fairly small lure. It's got three giant hooks on it. Awesome hookup ratio. Fish touches it, it's on. Uh, and you can't forget the T10 jumping minnows. T10s. I have like four or five T10s up in here. These are by far our favorite top water lures because of price. Uh, let's see. I haven't actually used this one yet. Yep. Rapala. Uh, let's see. Well, yeah. Different colors as well. Some days they'll hit different colors. Some days they won't uh, hit white. Some days they won't hit chrome. So there's another T10 for you. These are the white bass lures. And if you want to go for a bigger white bass, you got to get... A slightly bigger lure, and that's when this one comes in. This is uh, we're we're actually big fans of the Hidden Zara's spooks and the Hidden Spooks and Super Spooks and Super Spook Juniors, and uh, this is the Super Spook Junior, I believe. Yeah, Super Spook Junior, and this is also a really good lure to have uh, for the Oklahoma Killer Rig. And we've rigged it many times. A lot of times, this little bucktail makes a big difference. I mean, feather tail sometimes doesn't. But it's another good good lure to have. And this is when they're really aggressive, or when you know there's big you know, white bass, sand bass in the area. But these, like I said, this if you don't if you don't kill a rig with a top water, then I really don't know. Or you're not gonna have as much success because I know sand bass, man, they love that killer rig. They love it. That's how I usually catch them in like water that's uh, three feet or less. Because a lot of those uh, areas over here, where we have a river that turns on and off almost on, well, we have a river that's behind a dam. So this dam generates electric and turns on and off daily. So if you're there when the water's off, you, there's basically all these little pools. I'm talking about Keystone Dam and sometimes Luga and. The water turns on and off, but when the water turns off, you make your way out to those little pools. Well, that's a T10 for stripers. Make your way out to those little pools, and out in those little pools, there's going to be sand bass more than likely out there. Okay, and when you're out there, just aim, do the killer rig setup, and you'll be out there. Oh, can't even close it. Okay, the other thing that uh, I kind of want to mention is we are currently in testing on these guys. These are the Yun's Ferocity Beaver Tails. Uh, I know these are pretty hot and crappie and things like that, but we haven't really, really tried these out yet. Uh, I have high expectations for them because of the colors and they have, let me try to, what people call ribs. You see that? Yeah, look at these ribs there. And supposedly that's going to make it more attractive to fish. So, And they also come in pretty hot colors too. Uh, the white body chartreuse tail, that's a hot color on uh, on flukes. I know that's a proven one. The, the orange and yellow, I'm still kind of skeptical on, but I see a lot of people on the rivers with that color. And people tend to like it. And I know this color works right here. The red and the chartreuse tail because I've used them in the past on tubes. So, eager to try them out. Haven't tried them yet. Uh, here's the other one that's pretty hot for me. The Tournament Series. Uh, Squirmin Grub. This is only a 2 inch. This is pretty hot if you're trailing a killer rig. Okay, If you rig this in a killer rig, this is really hot. Other than that, it's kind of small by itself. Really, uh, This is actually my favorite... Uh, jig to trail behind a killer rig right here. This is the Bassmasters Tournament Series uh, Heavy Salt uh, 2 inch squirming Grub Smoke Silver Shad. That's what the uh, name of it is. Right, well that's it. That's what I have to cover. Um, in terms of heavy sinkers and things like that, I'm not a big fan of that unless if you want to do like a, 
a long cast or uh, something of that nature. But usually, like I said, 90% of my gear is going to be these guys right here. Jigs. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.